Prairie 4. Uh, an update, Jim Toshnik is now in Grand Island at St. Francis. And uh, Linda's going over as much as she can to see him. We're going to take her over this afternoon, so she'll be with him this afternoon. Mike, we're glad to see you. You feeling better? Okay. Very glad to have Stacy with us. Have special people here today. Very special people. Um, the food pantry uh, is not asking for any requests right now, but be ready to participate in the Can Caravan in June. And that's always a very big fundraiser, so please keep that in mind. Um, next week we have a baptism and uh, a light brunch following. So if uh, you would like to contribute to the brunch, uh, please let me know. We'll have coffee and juice and that type provided, but um, if you would like to bring something to help with that, that would be great. And then we have a special recognition today, and she's not going to like this, but I don't care. April, would you come up, please? Notice the wonderful shirt, boy mom. The drama that girls about Harvard to keep alive. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. We are very grateful for April. Every Sunday she is here in Sunday school preparing for children. And she does a beautiful job. She's a very kind soul, the kind of person that we want our children to be working with. So April, on behalf of all of the congregation, we'd like to give you a flower from Mother's Day. Thank you so much. To thank you for all that you do for Sunday School.
Dear God, like a mother, our hearts cry out to you for forgiveness for our children and our country. Forgive us for straying from your sight and your word. Forgive us for refusing instruction and discipline. Give us patience, endurance, and guidance as we try to instill in our children and those you put in our care. Help us to be a reflection of you. Remind us daily how short life is and how precious all of your children are to you. As we get ready for the offering to be taken up today, I wanted to share a story with you. Um, in 1975, a few years back, uh, my mother died of pancreatic cancer. Uh, it was a tough one. And uh, at the same time, our church was getting brand new red plush carpet. And the women got together and decided that the carpet would be down for my mother's service. So the people came in, the carpet people came in, ripped up the old, put down this beautiful red carpet, and then the women came in and had to clean everything. All the pews were wiped down, the wood everywhere had to be cleaned, and the floors underneath the pews. And they worked late into the night to make sure that this was all ready the next day. So when we as a family walked in, there was this beautiful rush of red carpet and these ladies standing there smiling because of what they had given to my mom and to our family. That's the type of offering. If you don't get it, there's more than money. There's the institution of the church and the fact that this is our home and we are a family. So as you give your offering today, thank those lovely ladies who took the time and the effort to make sure that one single thing was done to make sure everything was good. Will the deacons come forward? Proverbs 31. Who here is a 
woman has ever cringed whenever you hear the scripture of Proverbs 31 woman? The perfect woman. The bar that's set up here and that everyone goes, that is absolutely unattainable. Or, yes, I've done that and I'm exhausted. Well, here's the thing. What a lot of people don't know and, and a lot of good, well-meaning male pastors don't tell you is she doesn't exist. <laughs> Okay? When King Solomon wrote this, he wrote it as a poem to his mom. Have you ever had a kid write you a letter? Maybe you wrote it to your mom. And you took her name, or you took the word mother, and you wrote a line for every letter. That's what this is. This poem is one that's actually through the alphabet. Did you ever do that in school? Write a poem about someone and go A, and then something, and B, and C, and D. But this is in the Hebrew alphabet. So that's why we don't catch it. So what King Solomon did was he took the Hebrew alphabet, which is 22 letters, 24, and he went through each letter of what his mother meant to him. So this would be, you could say, the very first Mother's Day card. <laughs> but we do have one that, um, there's a song that um, Eddie, uh, I can't think of his name, He's an old country western guy. Uh, he actually made this popular. And it's called Mother. The original lyrics were written in 1915, a little bit after Solomon. But I thought I would sing that for you today. Bringing her food from afar. 
She gets up while it is still night. She provides food for her family and portions for her female servants. She considers a field and buys it out of her earnings. She plants a vineyard. She sits about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her tasks. She sees that her trading is profitable and her lamp does not go out at night. In her hand, she holds the distaff and grasps the spindle with her fingers. She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hand to the needy. When it snows, she has no fear for her household, for all of them are clothed in scarlet. She makes covering for her bed. She is clothed in fine linen and purple. Her husband is respected at the city gate where he takes his seat among the owners of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them and supplies the merchants with sashes. She is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. She speaks wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her, if he knows what's good for him. <laughs> Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Honor her for all that her hands have done, and let her works bring her praise at the city gate. This is the reading. Thanks be to God. Mother's Day, but technically you still have to work. 
May the only person pressing your buttons this Mother's Day is a train whistle. <laughs> I want my children to have all the things I could afford, then I want to move in with them. <laughs> that was Phyllis Diller. Love Phyllis Diller. Ever heard of a job that requires no experience, gives no training, pays nothing, and you can't quit? That's motherhood. Oh, and people's lives are on the line. <laughs> Moms don't wish they could sleep like a baby. They wish they could sleep like Dan. <laughs> he can laugh because he knows that's what it is. <laughs> she is clothed with strength and dignity, and she can laugh at the days to come. She speaks wisdom, and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. See, I like this slide. I like these three verses. Because this is the epitome of every mother. She is clothed with strength and dignity because no matter what you've had to go through, is what makes the strength. God doesn't just automatically make you a superhero. He doesn't automatically give you strength. <laughs> he walks you through those times and causes you to become strong. You don't just automatically get dignity. You get dignity because walking through those times, you did not do it on your own. You leaned on God. I think about all the, the moms out there, and it's not just moms and grandmas, but it's the aunts, it's the stepmoms, it's the adopted aunts, it's all the women who have ever had children put in their lives that they've touched, that they've helped raise, that they've watched grow up to be young men and women. She speaks wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. Because I so told you, that's why. You ever said that? That was one of the things that I said that I would never say. And then I found out my mom said the same thing. And guess what? I found myself when Chantel was five and asking the same question for the hundredth time. Because I said so. <laughs> and I realized. <laughs> You know, I remember my brother telling my mom, well, actually, I think we both sat her down and told her after we had kids that now we realize just how wise she was. Because <laughs> it seemed like every time we opened up her mouth, out came our mother. But where does that wisdom come from? It comes from hmm, years of being around the block, but it comes from sitting in church and teaching Sunday school and teaching Bible school, and doing daily devotions. That's where the wisdom comes from. She watches over the affairs of her household. And who here has ever worn 27 hats at one time? <laughs> Maybe chauffeur, cook, cleaning lady, uh, volleyball coach, basketball coach, soccer mom, softball coach. Maybe you have animals, so you were also outside doing all of that, or gardener, just everything. We wear those hats. It's keeping those affairs, keeping those plates spinning, keeping those balls in the air as we're juggling, and sometimes it can feel like everything comes crashing down. Sometimes we can't keep all the plates spinning. But here's the thing. This is not what we're supposed to have to live up to. <laughs> this is how our family sees us in their eyes because they admire the attempt and the time that you kept those plates spinning. But they don't always expect it. And I, I always hated this last line. And does not eat the bread of idleness. Who here has ever thought that that meant you could never sit down and take a break? Especially in our day and age, you're going, 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 going all the time. But 
I say that, but I think back to a little old lady that used to sit in our church, Maggie Hayes, Margaret Hayes. She was 104 years old. She came every single Sunday. We had church at 9, and she never missed a Sunday. Stood up for every hymn. And my dad was a house painter, and I used to work with him. And I remember painting her little house there in Old Junction. And we showed up at 7 o'clock in the morning to start. And she had already been up. And she had made cinnamon rolls for everybody. And she was making bread for lunch. And within an hour, she was slicing apples for a pie. And I thought, even at that age, does a mom ever get to sleep? <laughs> That's not what that means, though. It's okay to take a break. It's okay to recharge. It's okay to spend that time doing what you would like to do. Because what's the saying? If mom ain't happy, ain't nobody happy, right? I love how we don't even have to say out loud that I'm your favorite child. Now see, my mom, this would be her goal, but she's also an only child. <laughs> silence is golden unless you have kids, and then silence is suspicious. <laughs> Every parent is shaking their head. You've had that moment of panic, I'm sure, where you, you got into something, you read the book, the kids are playing or whatever, there's all this kind of noise chaos in the background. And you get to go in or you're on the phone and then just all of a sudden you just have this moment of sheer panic. And you realize they've been quiet for too long. <laughs> right? I remember growing up, uh, my brother was, I wasn't that old, he was two maybe. And we were in the, our house out in the country. And mom, had, she was going to put him down for a nap, but he was playing at that time. And so she went in a little later because she was going to put him down, and she couldn't find him. Couldn't find him anywhere. Well, you know, I was at least six, so I was too old for naps. <laughs> Maybe five. And so I was helping her. Well, we lived down on an acreage and could not find him literally anywhere. We tore the house apart. We were outside hollering. I can only imagine now. I was even scared as a five-year-old, but I can only imagine the panic that was in my mother's heart and her mind as she's thinking, where on earth could this child have gone? And as we were walking by, she was, I know, she must have been praying, was why we were so quiet. <laughs> and we could hear something, and it was snoring. Well, my dad had made my brother this little captain bed. I don't know if you know what a captain bed is, but it's a little twin bed, and it fit against the wall in between these walls, and it had doors and it had drawers, so you could put all these toys and everything in. Well, as she went in there listening for the sound of the snores, she opened up the door, and he had crawled into the back of that bed and had shoved all of his stuffed animals in front <laughs> so we could find him. <laughs> yes, silence can be very suspicious. <laughs> I love this one. You mean to tell me your real name isn't Mom? <laughs> Who here has a parent that has a God-given name that is not the name that everybody calls them? How old were you before you knew what your parents' real name was? My dad is Skip. That's not his name. His name is Melvin Dwayne, but even Grandma didn't like that name. She only called him that to keep it in the family. So he was Skipper when he came home from the hospital. I didn't know what his real name was. My grandma's name was Blondie. I'd known her as Blondie. Everybody knew her as Blondie. It wasn't until I was probably in high school that I found out that her name was Aileen. Elvador. Her children arise and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. You know, nothing, I think, can warm a heart more. Because sometimes, let's face it, it doesn't matter if you're a mom, if you're a dad, being a parent can seem like a very thankless job, can it? <laughs> At times. Especially when you have literally stayed up all night long helping to get a project done that was due that next morning that they didn't tell you about, and they're freaking out, and they need sleep. 
And then you get it all done and you present them to it with a bow and a smile, having no sleep all night, only to have them say, well, why did you do it that way? <laughs> yeah. It is so sweet when those kids come to you and they wrap their arms around you and they give you a big slobbery kiss or they write a, a note that says, Happy Mother's Day or Happy Father's Day. Thank you for all the things. I, I've been going through, we, we've been trying to move things around and move stuff from the basement to the attic and vice versa. And I've been going through and consolidating boxes because we had so many little boxes in one big box. And it's fun to pull out the old cards or the old letters or the old mementos that you've kept. And I, I found one from Chantel who said, Dear Mom, I'm sorry. I'm so, so, so sorry. <laughs> Don't even remember what she had done. But then she went on to, to write a whole long letter of all the things that she was thankful for and all the things that I had done for her. And that helps gloss over all those rough days. King Solomon says, many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. I think he started Hallmark. <clears throat> my kids can never make fun of me for teaching them how to use my phone. I taught them how to use a spoon. <laughs> I remind them of that. A good mother loves her kids. A great mother still loves them, even when they're teenagers. All the moms of teenagers, <laughs> we got teenagers shaking their head. So this one goes with that. I am a mother of dragons. I need an army, not edible arrangement. <laughs> Mom, what's it like to have the greatest daughter in the world, which you don't put on Mother's Day card? I don't know, honey. You have to ask your grandma. <laughs> You never realize how weird you are until you have a kid that acts just like you. <laughs> or three of them. You know, here's the thing. That's what's fun. When you look at these generational um, pictures, <laughs> as I said, uh, the little church of McCool still does mother-daughter banquet, and they've been doing it for probably 100 years. I'm not joking on that. And as a little kid, I, I always went. And so we have pictures, and, and the, the last one that I had was of my grandmother, my mom's mom. My mom, me, and all three girls. And actually, then Russ's three girls were in there, too. And the funny thing is, is I look at those pictures of us, how much we are so much alike. If you were to look at my grandmother when she is 14, other than being a black and white photo, it could be me. If I look at pictures of my mom when she was 14, if you did not know, because of the make and model of the car in the background, you would think it was me. And besides the physical resemblance, I laugh as I looked at the clippings and the savings and the, and the funny notes and the cards, we are all just as crazy and we are all alike. We all have the same sense of humor, but we all have that same drive and passion for life and a passion to help one another. And I guess a passion to be weird. He says, charm is deceitful and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised Honor her for all that her hands have done, and let her works bring her praise at the city gate. See, a really, really good mom doesn't need advertising. Everybody knows it. Everybody sees you. They see what you've done. They see what you've accomplished. They see it in your children. If you were to ask any mom what's the best compliment they could ever get, is going out to eat. And having someone come up to you afterwards and say, I just wanted to tell you, I am so impressed with your children. They are such good kids. They sat there so quietly and they ate and they were polite. And you're just like, oh, your heart's melting. Because they didn't see them an hour before you sat down. <laughs> To my laundry, folding, food-serving, problem-solving hero, superhero, 
Happy Mother's Day. So who needs superheroes when we have a mom, right? So what makes a mom super? Besides all the day in, day out, the dirt fighting, cooking, cleaning, chauffeuring, dip, laundry, dishes, shopping, nursing, praying, teaching, discipline, kissing, and hugging. It is teaching and raising her kids in the Word of God. Proverbs 22, 6, Solomon was very spot on on this too. He said, train up a child in the way they should go and they will not depart from it. Though they may take detours, they may take a lot of detours, but they will come back. And the reason why they come back is because mom didn't wash her hands of them when they left the door. She stayed on her knees praying day in, day out, that they would not forget the God that she instilled in their heart. So moms, your biggest job right now is raising not only your children, but your grandchildren, your nieces, your nephews, the kids that are in this church. As Pat said, it takes a whole congregation, and that's why we come to church. Oh, sure, we can all sit at home and watch me on TV, but, you know, I look so much slimmer in person than I do on TV. But we could do that, but we miss the camaraderie. We miss the fellowship. We miss the family. We miss the support. We miss the strength. We miss the recharging that we get when we have barely crawled through the week. And we come and we fall in these pews. And we leave feeling the power and the warmth and the love of not only God, but those around us holding each and every one up. You're not just teaching your kids, but you're also teaching your daughters to be super as well in the eyes of God. Because they're going to be moms one day. You're going to teach them where your power really comes from. It comes from God. And your recharging strength station is prayer. Your supervision <laughs> behind your head in front is this, through the scriptures. Your super hearing is from listening to the Holy Spirit and God's voice. And your super patience is from Jesus, who is the Prince of Peace, who gives us peace beyond all understanding. I love this one. It says, see, I told you. So that's how she does it. Faster than a speeding toddler, more powerful than the Energizer Bunny, and able to leap tall mounds of laundry in a single bound. It's a kiss. It's a hug. No. It's Superman. Actually, I do have a Superman t-shirt. Thought about wearing it. When you say yes to God and yes to being a mom or a stepmom or a grandma or an aunt or an adopted aunt, choose your cake. And know that when you put it on, you are not sent on this mission alone. And while you can't save your kids, teach them about the one who can, and that is Jesus Christ. So happy Mother's Day to all of you super duper moms out there. Amen. As we come to our time of prayer, I'd ask if there are those that we would like to lift up, Stacy's going to be going in at the end of the month for surgery. We will be having a lot of baptisms next week. If you have not been baptized and you are interested, let me know. We, there is always room in the water for one more. There's going to be a little special treat too because um, I have smuggled back water from the Jordan River, so. We're going to make that. Actually, we, we were going to joke about that. I'll save that joke for next week. But. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have those that we will lift up? Jason? Is he still going on? Okay. He's trying to gain his strength. They paused in the Did they? Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you today, and we, there are many on our hearts that are in need of your healing touch. Also lift up Michael as he's still healing from that horrible accident. 
Dear Lord, there are many moms on our hearts right now that we know are really having a hard time today. Those who've lost children, those who've miscarried, those who have lost adult children, and the whole is so real in the heart. Those who have had kids that have turned away and disappeared. Those who have become the prodigal son or daughter and did return. Those who are watching their own mothers or grandmothers in those final stages of life. Dear Lord, we know that this day can be bittersweet. And we thank you that while there are a lot of moms out there right now that are probably feeling like failures, they're feeling like they're not good enough, like they don't measure up, that you see them and you've never called us to be perfect. You just called us to be teachable, to be willing to be that vessel to be a reflection of you to our children and all those kids that you have placed in our path. We thank you that your son came and he emulated all those aspects. You are our father, but you also created moms. And you instilled in them every bit of you. We thank you that on this day we can honor all the women in our lives that have brought us to the point where we are. And we say a special prayer for all those moms out there today who have touched our lives or those who are hurting. And like a mom sometimes where words just are not even on our lips anymore. Lord, we have exhausted all these. We come to you with a prayer that you taught us to pray. If you would join with me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As we come to Christ's table, we come. Remembering the night in which he sat with his closest. The ones that he had bestowed his wisdom upon. And he lifted up the loaf and he gave thanks and he blessed it. And then he broke it. And he said, this is now my body which will be broken for you. Every time you eat of this, do this in remembrance of me. And then he picked up the cup. The cup of redemption. He gave thanks, he blessed it. And he said, this is now going to be a new covenant. A covenant between myself and you would be my blood that would pour out for the forgiveness of all sin. Every time you drink of this, do this in remembrance of me. And so as the body of Christ, we come before his feast that is open and inviting to all. Eating and drinking, remembering his death, his resurrection, and proclaiming his coming again. You would join with me in our next hymn. It's Happiness is the Lord, which is page 387.
As we share together in this bread and the cup, Lord, we remember how on the same night that you were betrayed, you took a piece of bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to your disciples and said, Eat this in remembrance of me. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Great God, we praise you for bringing into being everything around us. The beauty of this sanctuary gives us a glimpse of your handiwork. And we know the faithful disciples and members of this church. And we know that we thank them for the wonderful gift. In our moms, we see Jesus, acts of selfless love, and the renewal of a place that we can come to every day, every week. This table, the meal given to us by your son, Jesus Christ. Experience miracles every day. We bless this meal and those who praise you during the time of meditation and prayer. Amen. leave you with the last line of the call to worship. God knows you intimately. He loves you unconditionally. He guides and directs your paths and he gives you comfort and he gives you strength. May you go on this wonderful happy Mother's Day knowing that the lives you have touched will last an eternity. Now and forevermore. Thank you.